Insiders peek into why the franchise industry is currently in crisis. My name is Sean Kelly. Publish a cheery little website called unhappyfranchisee.com, which you can find at unhappyfranchisee.com. And for 14 years, unhappyfranchisee.com has enabled franchise owners and former franchise owners to share their experiences and to give their advice to sp prospective franchisees under the protection of anonymous speech. And this has enabled both prospective franchise owners and prospective investors to get the information that the FTC intended for them to be able to get. Now you see both names, Experimac and Experimax in this presentation because they were Experimac when they started out and um, a little company named Apple objected to uh, their registered trademark, Mac, being in their name. So they had to change it. Franchisees had to change their signage and everything. And so now they are Expera Max. I'm going to run you through the opportunity. I'm going to run you through who is endorsing it, who is promoting it, who is making money off advertising it. And I'm going to show you the sales pitch that franchisees, prospective franchisees are receiving and what the representations are that are turning those prospective franchisees into fully invested franchisees. I'm going to show you who's financing it and then I'm going to show you the outcome of these franchise investments from this heralded company. My goal with this presentation is twofold. First of all, I want to create awareness and understanding of the issues that are being widely publicized now that Congress and um, hopefully the FTC are going to be taking a hard look at a lot of these issues in the franchise industry. And the other thing that I'm trying to do is start a conversation. So I'm going to give you this presentation, this overview. This is my well-researched opinion, but it's still opinion. And I want to speak with everybody who's mentioned in this, including the company, and get their opinion, get their corrections, get their clarifications, get their rebuttals to the information that I'm putting out there and the opinions that I'm putting out there and the franchisees are putting out there and really have a productive, open conversation about this situation which I think you're going to find interesting. And even if you are a franchise industry insider, you're gonna learn some things in this. So who's promoting this $350,000 concept? Just about everybody in the industry, um, at least in that little part of the industry that goes to trade shows and promotes the more mom and pop types of opportunities. So the big gun, International Franchise Association, they are pushing it hard. You can get information and, and uh, become a lead on their website at franchise.org. They're promoting it. They're promoting it through their VETFRAN program, which specifically targets military veterans. And it's included in lists of best um, opportunities for our returning veterans. Um, they're also promoting it, as you'll see, through their in International Franchise Expo, live and online, and in regional uh, franchise shows, which is the way that they've sold hundreds of Experimac franchises through these trade shows. It's being promoted by every major franchise publication, and even some that are not really that major. Uh, but Entrepreneur is promoting Experimax, Franchising USA, Franchise Times, Global Franchise, the Pay Per Play, Franchise Promotional Magazine, a zillion different franchise advertising portals, which are the, the ones that, you know, you go on and they've got a lot of different opportunities and you click it and it says, would you like information about this? And it creates a lead and 
sends it uh, or sells it to the company. Um, be the boss, franchise.com, franchise direct, franchise help, franchise.org, franchisesamerica.com, proven franchises.com, franchisegator.com, franchise solutions.com, top franchise.com, and biz by sell, which I didn't have room for on there. Everybody is promoting this and everybody's got their hand in, in uh, and just incredibly excited about this. The franchise brokers who are kind of a major force in, in selling franchises, they position themselves as free consultants and they say, hey, you know what, we'll, we'll give you a free consultation and, and, and free information and you don't have to pay us anything, we'll help you know, look at your personality and we'll help steer you to the best opportunity for you. And you don't have to pay us because we're consultants, but we get paid by the franchisor. Um, the cynics among you might say that's kind of like going into a, a car dealership and having a car, car salesman say to you, hey, I'm, I'm a, an automotive consultant and, uh, you know, I, I'm going to consult with you about which one of these cars you want to buy and uh, don't worry you don't have to pay me because you know what the car company is going to be footing that bill but anyway they're very excited um, IFPG is a is a organization that supports brokers Franserve IBBA uh, this woman right here Lisa Welko is a member of IFPG and she sold two maybe three uh, Experimac franchises and was very excited about closing one deal and getting them uh, started in less than six months. Transworld Business Consultants, that's actually owned by UFG, United Franchise Group. They have the same owners. Now, the Small Business Administration, the SBA, supported by your tax dollars, is incredibly excited about Experimac and Experimax now, and has included them and the other UFG brands on their franchise registry, which means that they can fast track uh, their guaranteed loan program, which you'll see in, in a little bit how the franchisees are able to go into debt quickly with the comfort of knowing that money is guaranteed to the bank so that they, you know, in, in case they fail, the bank won't get hurt and the franchisor will also get the franchisor's money which is a relief the u.s commercial service uh, part of the u.s department of commerce uh, in charge of a uh, program on export.gov is very excited about experimax and is including them and the other uf ufg brands in exporting uh, brands from the United States onto other countries so that they can enjoy the same benefits that that we do got endorsements from all of these different major players in franchising and um, so far we haven't heard anything negative from the Federal Trade Commission which the Federal Trade Commission in the late 90s actually issued an, a permanent injunction against um, Roy Titus, who was the head of Minuteman Press, and Speedy Sinorama during the 80s and 90s. Very controversial figure at that time because he would set up sort of a boiler room in franchise expos and franchise conventions where his aggressive salespeople would basically grab people by the lapels and pull them into this booth, face them towards the wall, and read from a six-page script um, that was very effective but also illegal since they were making unfounded earnings claims and profitability claims. Roy Titus and his executives, including UFG founder and CEO Ray Titus, who was in his early 20s and was a franchise salesman at that time, was also included in this and Ray Titus actually had made some of those illegal representations and had actually been quoted in there as saying, yeah, we, we gave those earnings and, and those profitability claims 
uh, and we didn't really have any basis because we didn't track the profitability of franchisees and their businesses. When they further asked him, he, he said, that's not the kind of thing that you put in writing, which is kind of the FTC's point is it's exactly what you have to put in writing. And if it's not in a franchise disclosure document, you're not allowed to make those kinds of claims and you have to have substantiation. So a lot of people lost their investments. A lot of people were ruined uh, back in the 90s. Roy and and uh, Ray and the gang were fined uh, $3.4 million, I believe, at the time. And they issued this permanent injunction that said, knock it off, you guys are not allowed to do this stuff anymore. And um, we need to do this permanent injunction because you actually have a, a high likelihood of reoffending. Uh, you, these guys did not seem to be sorry about this, did, said the judge, and uh, they're going to be in a position to keep, you know, pulling this stuff. So we're going to issue this permanent injunction, and you know, basically monitor them. So, eh, you know, it's in their document, but the FTC hasn't uh, hasn't reopened that that concern. So. You know, it seems like that's a, a pretty good endorsement, too. They must be doing things on the up and up, one would assume. Correct? That would be people doing their homework and say, eh, well, they had problems back in that. That's 20-something years ago. UFG has opened this Titus Center, which is part of Palm Beach Atlantic University. It's a program uh, to study franchising. And it's named after Roy Titus, the FTC's <laughs> poster child from, from the end of the 90s. Here is the, the board of this Titus Center. Actually has 60-something prominent people in the franchise industry endorsing it and, um, and as, as part of it. And so we've got a lot of people who are very influential and have a lot of different companies that are in the franchise industry all lending their support and their credibility to uh, UFG and the Titus Center, the Tituses, and, you know, by extension, Experimac. And so there's, there's a lot of credibility here being extended onto this franchise opportunity. Now, the head of this robust academic institution called the Titus Center, Palm Beach Atlantic University, is headed by the preeminent expert on franchising, Dr. John Hayes, who's right there on the right, and um, he's, a, he's a doctor. He'll, he will make sure that you know that. And he has written just an amazing number of books that are self-published onto Amazon as our, our bestsellers. According to the introduction to these books, he has examined and gone through 3,000 different franchise opportunities, and he's winnowed them down to the most amazing franchises. The United Franchise Group franchises happen to be among those most amazing, and the most amazing is also Experimac. We've also got this outside industry expert singing its praises, and you'll hear more about, about that. So the Titus Center board members include prominent lawyers, Warren Lewis, Lane Fisher, Alan Berger, McDonald Hopkins, uh, people in the funding industry, Ronald Feldman, Apple Pie Capital, Jeff Sieber, Fran Fund, um, people involved with publications, Gary Gardner, publisher of Franchise Update Media, um, Tom Portizzi of the MFV Expeditions, who, who puts on those franchise shows, uh, Marianne O'Connell from FranWise, Stan Friedman, Red Boswell, who heads up that IFPG broker group that was selling a bunch of these, uh, another academian, academician, Cheryl Babcock of uh, Nova Southeast Eastern University, Gary Fin Finley now with Restoration One, who is very involved with the Curves franchise as it was coming up, 
Ken Hutchison, U.S. Lawns, Madison Job, who uh, retired from Wingstop, Scott White, who actually is the head of BizCom Associates, who publishes those uh, amazing books on franchising for uh, for Mr. Dr. John Hayes and many more. And so these people have all, you know, lent their names and their credibility to back UFG and uh, Ray Titus and John Hayes and Experimax and John Hayes and Experimax. We have closed many, many deals from leads from MFE shows. Um, I would say probably in the hundreds at this point. To the credit of UFG and uh, the Tituses and, and Jim Muir and Experimac, the, the people that they attracted and financing and got into the program are pretty amazing. All different areas, but very well-educated senior sales consultants. One guy is a uh, producer of commercials and, and television cinematographer, a software engineer, chief information officer, chief technology officer, VP of technology, was the e-commerce and operations expert for uh, Office Depot. There are consultants who had years of experience uh, working in upper management with IBM, with Motorola, uh, and and then there are other single mothers who, you know, worked in, in sales or retail or on the road and wanted to have an opportunity to have a family business. You know, this, this woman up on the on the right from Pittsburgh, she wanted to work with her son who had just graduated from art school. There's some other people up there who wanted to work with their adult sons, their kids were into it. And it was a, a great opportunity from everything that they saw and everything that they were told and everything they were reassured. You have to credit somebody like, like Jim Muir and Experimac. What kind of presentation do you give when you know, what you're selling is not toothpaste or, or, you know, soft drinks, you're selling somebody on the opportunity that is going to require a 35 year commitment because that's the term of Experimax. It's a 35 year commitment and $350,000 or so and, and more when, when you start operating it intelligent and cautious people so you have to have a pretty good pitch it's great to be the brand president of a thriving growing company Thermac is a great franchise to get it's an opportunity to make a lot of money but this is an opportunity for a franchisee to open up a franchise that actually produces a lot of dollars you make money quick you make money fast Stay realistically 120 days and if you follow their procedures, it's, it's difficult to go wrong. We've had very few failures. Yeah, and I mean, he would tell us, like, well, I'm not supposed to tell you any exact numbers, but, but you know, these stores are doing $100,000 a month. He was okay. like, you guys should easily be able to hit them. So this is the point where you pop the champagne corks because they're sold. And why wouldn't they be sold? They've gotten to the Emerald City and everybody from the IFA to the people who write the publications and are all excited and everybody says Experimac's a great opportunity, you're going to make money, you're going to make it quick and the SBA is standing by, is going to give you some financing. Everybody is all excited, and so it is time for you to celebrate. Celebrate the fact that you are, what's the term? I don't know, this saying, I'm fumbling with it right now. It's being in business, like, for your self. You're in business for yourself, but you never buy yourself. Create something for yourself. But not by yourself.
You know, you're, you're business for yourself, but not by yourself. Be in business for yourself. You're in the business for yourself. You're in business for yourself. But not by yourself. But not by yourself. You're, you're in business for yourself, but you're never by yourself. Yeah, that's right. You're in business for yourself, but you're not by yourself. Hi, this is John Hayes with the How to Buy Franchise Show. I'm going to talk to Paul Bosley, who is with the Business Finance Depot. Uh, I was hired by United Franchise Group all right. that has about seven brands, and now I, uh, I'm primarily the one that does all their financing. I financed about 70 of the experiments. Wonderful. I'm really financing, give or take, $220,000. Yeah. Experimac to op get it open is going to cost about three hundred, three hundred and fifty thousand. But the franchisee has to somehow come up with maybe forty to sixty thousand dollars liquid cash for that. So if they've got that in their 401k, if they've got it in their bank account, or if they need to tap into some family money, he can get them the financing through SBA guaranteed loan very quickly. Thanks. It's an automated process. It's a pretty, okay. you know, the express loan is, is kind of like I call it, the bank has created a McDonald's for loans. Yeah. So, you know, so they move quick. With Leasing is within a week. Leasing, leasing is a very fast process. It's, it's, leasing is under the radar. It's not regulated. Anybody can be a leasing broker. Under the radar, unregulated, anybody can be a leasing broker. The express loan, uh, we usually can get a pre-approval within a week too. So we're, we work pretty quick. It's pretty I, quick. I do a lot of volume. Do I need to come to your office in no. South Florida? I never meet anybody. Oh, no. Never meets anybody. Financial projections are the hard. Yes. And a franchisor can't necessarily help you with financial projections. I because, do that. Okay, you can do that. Yeah. And you're not violating a um, no. any kind of a an earnings claim or no. even if an item 19 is not in the document. No. No. When you're, am I going to make money? You'll make money quick. Okay. Yeah, you'll make money fast. It's difficult to go wrong in, in one of those yeah. businesses. Yeah, we've had very few failures. Very so the Wizard of Boz, how is it that this guy is able to get that McDonald's assembly line process 70, 80, probably by now over 90 SBA loans? How, how does he do it? It's a, it's, it's pretty amazing that he can put people in debt for over two hundred thousand dollars within a week, and he doesn't even meet with them. I don't meet with anybody. <laughs> My favorite line: I don't meet with anybody. So I've seen a lot of the applications that he sends in or he has the franchisees send in and they're all pretty consistent. They, they have the first year, he plugs in the numbers that they need to fast track this thing. First year is 700 to 760,000 in gross sales. Year two, you know, a little under a million to a little over a million in gross sales is what they plug in. And they put in expenses so that it hits the magic number. Profitability. I've seen correspondence between franchisees and uh, the Wizard of Boz. Where the franchisees say, you know, I'm just not really that comfortable with these projections. I think they're overly optimistic. And basically Boz or Tim Phillips come back and say, you know what? This is what we do. If you want the loan to be approved this is what you're going to plug in there and uh and then you'll get the loan and then you can get off to you know making that quick money having that store throw off all those dollars the way jim muir said they would the way that uh bosley said they would and uh get into that business where very few people fail as tom bosley told you and as john uh, Hayes, Dr. John Hayes told you. So they go ahead. They've already signed the agreement. They go ahead. They sign off on these these documents. They send them in and they get them rubber stamped. Um, they also might be using a company called Benetrends, which uh, helps extract their money from their 401k. It's called a ROBS program, which is one of the beautiful acronyms that I've seen. Um, and, and they, they pull money out there and, uh, and they get them up to that 300, 
All right, so here's a quick recap. Once upon a time, there were dozens, actually hundreds, of individuals who were doing well. They were people just like your friends, your family, your neighbors, uh, people that you know who were respectable, who worked hard, who were responsible, who accomplished a lot of things, who played by the rules, who had worked for a number of years, were reliable. They had built good careers. They had put away some savings. They had put built up some home equity. Maybe they had a retirement account. Uh, they had the respect of their family members who were willing to invest some money if they wanted to start a venture. Uh, they had great credit scores. Maybe they had put away some money for their kids' college funds. Dreamed of owning uh, their own businesses, being their own boss, having something that they could build with their families, something that they could control and build equity. And they heard about this magical land called franchising, this place where you could own a business, but also have the advantages of a large corporation, a brand name and systems, uh, an organization to be part of. And so they ventured into this franchise land and they found a lot of really nice people who were just more than willing to help them out. And But being smart and being good students and always doing their homework, they did their research. They went to the franchise shows. They went to the conventions. They went to the uh, to the International Franchise Association. On the website, they read what was there. They read uh, books about amazing franchises. They studied, the uh, read the publications, and combed through the franchise portals of different opportunities. And maybe they hooked up with a franchise consultant, who, like this Lisa Welko pictured here, who were willing to help them research different franchise opportunities and find one that matched well for their personality and for their goals. One thing that they learned in this franchise world, everybody felt very good about recommending this United Franchise Group, and everybody felt great about recommending this Experimac, later called Experimax, which is a computer store, just like the Apple store, except they sell certified pre-owned Apple computers, and also uh, iPhones. And so they kept looking into that, and they found a little bit more, uh, learned a little bit more about that, and the company told them the advantages, which are that it's a thriving, growing company, that you'll make a lot of money, that it produces a lot of dollars. Uh, and uh, they saw interviews with Paul Bosley, funding expert, who told them, you'll make money fast, realistically, 120 days will start being turning a profit. And uh, Dr. John Hayes said, if you follow the system, it's it's hard to go wrong with that system. And Paul Bosley said, yeah, you know, we've had very few failures. And Ray Titus up here, who is the head of United Franchise Group, recounted how their first store did 600,000 in the first year, 1.1 million in gross sales the second year, and 1.8 million in the third year. And the vice presidents and the sales staff um, were very helpful and told them not to worry that they would easily hit $100,000 per month. And that, you know, by the second year, they would be in the million dollar club. These good students and these uh, good business people kind of flocked to Experimac and between 2015 and now, 2021, Experimax and UFG were able to sign 169 different franchise agreements at $350,000 investment each, in no small part. And what really sold a lot of these very cautious and analytical people was their trip to the Emerald City, which was the headquarters of UFG, down in West Palm Beach, uh, Florida, where they met a lot of really nice people and were very impressed. United Franchise Group has been established for 33 years. 
so we've got it down pat. We actually have a home office with almost 200 employees there that actually are there just to support franchisees. We can help them with accounting, we can help them with training questions. We have a, a field support team that goes out and visits stores on a regular basis. So we've got all sorts of great advice and we've got, of course, the experience of having done it for so many years that we probably won't find too many questions that we get that we haven't already seen before. On top of that, the Wizard of Boz, Paul Bursley, gotten them set up with all, all their funding needs and within a week was able to help them plunge $225,000, $300,000 into debt. And he did this by providing the same information that they had been hearing about that they could be doing 700,000, you know, to 800,000 in their first year and that they were likely to be topping a million dollars uh, per year you know, from year two onward. Fortunately, the story doesn't end there with that happy ending. Unfortunately, it's actually based on a true story. And so what they found after visiting that amazing place in Emerald City was something very different than what they were promised. And then once they had their money, it was just a dial tone. So it was very, very evident once they, once they were paid, they could really care less what happened to, to us because they got what they came for. They also found out that the numbers that they had been given were not only illegal for the company to be providing those false claims, but that they were way off from reality and that the actual gross sales that were reported in, in the 2018 FDD, the average franchise that had been open for two years at that point was doing 367,944 in gross sales, not even half of what they claimed they would be doing in gross sales in their first year. And, and these stores are, this is after two full years. And after two full years, they even said they would be doing over a million dollars, you know, three times what these are, what their actual sales were um, at that point, and that they had been sold something that was entirely fictional. They're having problems and they can't understand why they're not, you know, producing the kind of revenue that they really had needed to in order to pay off those loans, uh, they realized that they had been lied to, that, that these stores do not make a lot of money, that they do not produce a lot of dollars, as Jim Muir had said. Bosley was not being honest when he said, you'll make money fast, 120 days, that the franchisees were not achieving uh, the numbers that Ray Titus had publicly talked about, 600,000 that stores were not easily hitting $100,000 per month as they had been told, and that there really was no million dollar club. And yes, total franchises, they had sold 169, but out of a total of 169 that have opened to date, the total who had exited, remember these are 35 year contracts, they had signed up for 35 year contracts and now within a year or two years, 123 of those had exited the system. And that means 107 of them had ceased operation entirely and 16 of them had transferred their franchise agreements to new owners, which usually meant that they sold it at a deep loss or pennies on the dollar or sometimes even gave it away. So this, this company has, in that short amount of time, a 73% franchise turnover rate. What was it that Dr. John Hayes had said? It's, it's difficult to go wrong in, the, in one of those businesses. Yeah, we've had very few failures. You humbug! Yeah. You're a very bad man. So in 2015, they opened 17 locations, and they the next year they went, and sold 60 franchises right off the bat. And they had five, five failures, 
five franchises closed like within that first year and so but they kept pressing on just said they were a vibrant growing company the next year they had in 2017 they opened 43 and they closed about half that many 21 franchises closed and then had eight transfers. So they almost closed or transferred. They lost as many owners as new ones that they gained. 2018, they only sold, they, they started going down. They opened 23 instead of 43, and they closed 18. It's great to be the brand president of a thriving, growing company. You humbug! Yeah. You're a very bad man. And they're in decline, 2019. They opened eight, and now the closures have overtaken, and they closed 13 with two transfers. They said that they only opened two in 2020 and closed 29 with three transfers. And now in 2021, they have closed 21 locations. This is only May, and they're down to 48 locations. So they had total franchi franchises, including transfers, 169. Total franchises that left the system, 123. And a franchise turnover rate of 72.78%. So as we go through these, these numbers, it bears reminding that each one of these numbers that we talk about as a closure and a failure means that families that were successful and doing well enough to make this investment have now been thrown into the worst financial situation that they've ever been in in their life because they trusted these guys. Each one of those closures that we're talking about may have resulted in a foreclosure. They may have lost their house, uh, very likely a bankruptcy. It's an opportunity to make a lot of money. Franchise that produces a lot of dollars. You make money quick. Hey, you make money fast. Stay realistically 120 days. For the first time, they've got accounts overdue. They're overdrawn. Their credit score is plunging. Um, many of them are having their their assets and their fixtures seized and and being auctioned off. You can be a good business person and a good Christian. In 26 years of doing business, I've never missed a night of sleep. You're a very bad man. And the SBA website talked about how the Small Business Administration is an advocate for small businesses like franchisees and how they enable them to get loans they wouldn't otherwise be able to get. Sounds really nice, but the guarantee is not to the franchisee, it's not to the small business owner, it's to the bank. They guarantee that the bank is going to get paid even if the small business owner fails. The guarantee that the bank is going to get paid and that they're going to have the money, we guarantee that United Franchise Group, they're going to get their money. And then if the franchisee fails, they're supposed to liquidate their assets. They might lose their home. They might lose their assets. And then whatever uh, is still outstanding to the bank, the American taxpayer foots the bill and pays the bank back. And meanwhile, the small business owner, the franchisee, now has the U.S. Department of the Treasury as their creditor. There are some who report their wages are going to be garnished. Sheramac franchise failure rate and uh, loan defaults to the SBA is so egregious that it features prominently in a report that was issued this April by Nevada Senator Cortez Masto. And you can get a copy of that. You can download that from the website unhappyfranchisee.com at this URL, or you can just go to it and you'll find it. It's featured prominently. There were 74 loans issued that, that were guaranteed to this point. So there were probably more. Uh, 35 of those have been charged off already. 47% of the amount that's been guaranteed has already been charged off. So $7.5 million the these 
the SBA guaranteed to pay these banks, and already nearly $5 million has been charged off and is being repaid to the bank, which is 66%. And you can bet that that's going to continue to rise. Les, do you think that Experimac is just sort of a, a one-off occurrence from UFG? Cortez Masto also has charts in here of some of the highest default rates, some of the highest default rates. And Experimac is listed in there. But also Embroid Me, the UFG brand now called Fully Promoted, and Signorama. Those are also high failure rate and high turnover franchises being sold by UFG. The SBA has continued to grant these guarantees for these loans despite these high failure rates. Well, I've been pretty rough on Mr. Ray Titus in this presentation, and even though every time I publish about UFG, I give them the opportunity to provide explanations or rebuttals or clarifications or, or corrections, and I never receive any kind of um, response whatsoever, and the same is true for uh, Dr. John Hayes. In the meantime, out of fairness, let's hear from Ray Titus. At United Franchise Group, we're passionate about entrepreneurs. We're passionate about helping people become entrepreneurs and, and build and grow their own business and be self-sufficient. Franchising in general, that's what good franchising is about. I would love to be remembered as somebody that was a, um, a positive force for good, to be a good business person and a good Christian. In 26 years of doing business, I've never missed a night of sleep. Um, I think our priorities are in, in the right place and their success is our success as a company and that's that focus on helping people achieve their dream of running and managing and owning their own business. Consider this. We have a franchise with a $350,000 investment, got a 77% turnover rate a fault rate of SBA loans that is over 50% and rising. 107 people, at the very least, out of 169, have lost their entire investment. Many have declared bankruptcy and are going to be ruined for years to come. Mr. Uh, Ray Titus, he cares about people and he cares about entrepreneurs. Has he ceased selling franchises? Has he retooled the system, find out why it's not working, find out why all these people are failing, and fix it, if it's fixable. They're supposed to be the computer repair expert. Maybe they need to be computer store repair experts. And don't sell another franchise until you can fulfill your promise of providing a safer and more stable franchise investment than somebody could get if they just started it on their own. As of March, they were renewing their registration so that they could continue to sell Amer Experimac franchises. The International Franchise Association's Franchise Expo, which is scheduled for September 9th through 10th next year, 2022. Guess who is already registered? Wow, what do you know? Experimax is already registered. They are ready to be selling. They're going to they've even get their booths assigned. What a great time that will be. You'll also be able to meet Paul Bosley. The whole, the whole gang is going to be there. So Franchise Expo South, MFV Exposition. If you've got, if you've got financial well-being that you are eager to get rid of, it's like a, a one-stop shop right there. You'll be able to go to booth 437 and get your sales pitch from Experimac and hear about what a, a great and vibrant company it is and, and how you'll make money fast. Yeah, you'll make money quickly, maybe 120 days. And if you like that, you can head right over here to 646 to Business Finance Depot where Paul Bosley will sign you up and get you a, uh, get you a loan 
that's backed by the Small Business Administration, so your bank gets their money. If you have a 401k, yeah, if you got a 401k, there's a Benetrends has, has got a booth there. Go and they can rob you. And the IFA is there to endorse the whole thing. You got accurate franchising. That's a, another part of UFG is going to be there. A fully promoted Venture X, Network Lead Generation, a bunch of these other brokers. Franchise Update, Gary Gardner's on the... Uh, He's on the board with Titus and Big Sky franchise team. So everybody's going to give you a really good recommendation for why you should buy one of those UFGs. And pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. You know, when I... When I look at that floor pan for uh, that IFA show and remember all the years that I used to go there. It reminds me of Harvey McKay who wrote the book How to Swim with the Sharks Without Getting Eaten Alive and to paraphrase one of his chapters he said that if you ever find yourself in a room far from home it's got a chandelier in it it's filled with a lot of really nice people who really really care about your success grab your checkbook, and run like hell. I'm Sean Kelly. I publish unhappyfranchisee.com, and I want to hear from you. I want to hear stories from franchisees, and if you're willing to do an interview, we'll do an, we'll do an interview about your experiences. If you disagree with me, I want to hear from you too. You can always post comments on any page in the site. You can go there and get documents, backup, research, Cortez Masters report, other reports on, on UFG and other problem franchisors. And you can leave anonymous comments. You can email me at unhappyfranchisee at gmail.com, unhappyfranchisee at gmail.com. And all of our correspondence will be confidential until you say it's not. If you want to make a donation and support this kind of research and support this kind of advocacy for franchise owners and truth telling, so there's a spot on the unhappyfranchisee.com, a contribute button, and there's also a GoFundMe that's specific to Experimac and putting out the truth in, the, in a franchise report. And that's really what it's all about, is restoring conversation that's supposed to be taking place about franchising, franchisors, and franchisees' experience, which is what the FTC intended when they put the franchise rule into place, yet they just didn't happen to put in a department to enforce it. And so it's up to us to pick up the slack until the new administration hopefully will take some action and protect consumers. Again, this is my well-researched opinion, but it's still my opinion, and all this stuff could be wrong. Do your own homework, double-check, question, send me questions, and post your, your rebuttals, and if I'm, you think I'm being unfair, go ahead and tell me. Just tell the truth when you do it. If you would like to take action, if you would like to try and make some positive change, you can go on to unhappyfranchisee.com. There's a page there where it'll tell you who to contact, who to contact at the FTC, who to contact at the SBA, who to contact at uh, Senator Massa's office, and ways that you can get involved and be heard and try and protect the American dream by putting an end to this kind of nonsense that should not be allowed to be happening. And finally, if you would like to sue me for anything that's posted here or elsewhere on the site, or if you'd like to sue unhappyfranchisee.com, um, I would just advise you to wait for a week or two until I can update the wall of shame section, which will give you some case studies of those who have tried to go that route in the past and sort of the unfortunate consequences that have happened to them as a result. And finally, I am available for parties or social functions if you would like 
uh, to me to come and talk about franchising and the problems in franchising. Or if you are suffering from insomnia, I am available for teleconference with the same electrifying voice that is lulling you to sleep right now. Thanks for sticking with me and hope to hear from you soon.